I don't understand how this always happens to me. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, people. If you're new here, I'm Brandy, and today is Try It Tuesday. Try It Tuesday is a series I started on the channel this year to help you, to help me, hopefully make better budget decisions on our DIY journey. Now last month I tried several popular crafting glues and as promised we are going to be doing chalk paints this month. But you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because you guys are going to help me choose next month's Try It Tuesday idea. Let's jump into the products we are going to be using and the three different surfaces we're going to be trying these products on. These are the four chalk paints of choice for this video, people, and I chose them due to convenience of purchase ability. And we are going to be mixing up our own little gem with these two items to try as well later on in the video. So just keep watching. I wanted to do a chalk paint medium. I seen my girl Erica do over at DIY with Erica, but it was sold out everywhere I looked, even online. There were even signs posted like this one in Michael's. The struggle has just been real trying to get a hold of paints. Anyhow, we're using three surfaces. This finished surface I want it to try on a piece of furniture I'm gonna be flipping this later in a couple months so keep an eye out for that video an unfinished piece of wood I had just laying around the house I picked up a couple weeks ago from Home Depot and these three 8x10 pieces of glass out of a frame from Dollar Tree we're only gonna use two though so let's look into these paints, starting with Waverly. I'm sure most people are familiar with this one. You can purchase it in store and online, and the cost usually depends upon the location. I pay $1.67 for the two ounce and $6.54 for the eight ounce where I purchase them. You can also get the 16 ounce in some colors for $10.54 at my store, and that also varies due to location. The product also says it can be used on furniture cabinets walls glass metal and more with a two hour dry time this art mines i found at michael's and it comes in this eight ounce jar for a 49 this product does not really give surfaces but it says it can be layered and sanded and no stain blocker is needed it also has a two hour dry time Folk Art is probably the one brand I had the easiest time finding being sold at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, plus Amazon. However, Amazon retailed the two ounce bottle for $7.68, while Michael's carried the eight ounce for $9.99, but Hobby Lobby had the lowest overall cost of the eight ounce at $8.99. This product says it can be used on wood, furniture, craft products, glass, metal, and more with a two hour dry time. Yes, the Rust-Oleum is much larger, but if we're talking per ounce, this is a great deal at $19.98. And I love the versatility of it being able to be purchased in spray paint as well. There are a variety of locations that sell this product, including purchasing offline. This does say no priming is needed, but recommends using a stain blocker with light colors on wood surfaces just to be safe with tanning. It also says you can recoat in two to four hours. There's a lot of literature online about creating your own chalk paint. I found an article that I was happy about or a blog or a website, whichever you want to say. And it was basically for eight ounces, like a cup. And I'm going with that one because I don't want to use a ginormous amount and then end up not being crazy about it. And I already have all this paint people. So we're, we're rolling with this. We'll go over that in just a little bit. You guys will see the recipe. So I'm being as fair as I can. I divided everything on the same surfaces. So they look all pretty identical, except maybe a little bit size. I used the same exact paintbrush and just went to the next one as I went down the row. I started with the glass. I did the un, the, the unfinished wood <laughs> and then the finished wood. And then I switched new paintbrush and then went to the folk art. 
In terms of application, I feel like the three of these, the Waverly, Folk Art, and Art Minds, apply about the same. The same use on the paintbrush, which was just one dip, and I was able to cover most of this little rectangle in each one of their little sections. However, the Art Minds was a little bit thicker, I felt. Also, you'll notice it's the only one with a color. It's because it's the only one I couldn't find in white. The struggle was so real trying to get everything for this video all month. For the Rust-Oleum, I'm not using a stain blocker like it recommends on the furniture piece. For this video, I do do that on pieces I make for myself or to sell for my little business I've started or my family, but we're not doing that in this video. I picked up this little craft bottle from Dollar Tree. I measured the paint to one cup. Again, I chose this recipe from this site because it was one of the few for that amount. I didn't want to have too much in case I did not like this paint. You can purchase this paint at Lowe's. I spent a little bit over $20 for it. It's a little pricey, but the recommendations on different sites were this paint brand, so that's what I'm using. I'm also taking a teaspoon measure to measure out three teaspoons because they equal one tablespoon. I know because Google told me so. <laughs> we need four tablespoons. So I'm doing three tablespoons, adding a little bit of water, and then we're stirring I repeated this process until I had all the measurements right and then just used a little plastic fork to stir this up. It was very gritty. A lot of the recommendations and different things online, people use mixers, little blenders, little processing things. I do not have anything spare like that, so I just use some elbow grease. And look, it's beautiful. It turned out really smooth. I was very pleased with it. And then I just applied it to the three different surfaces. I do not feel that this was any different with the application process than the Rust-Oleum. It was shockingly a little bit thinner compared to what I thought. Maybe I should have put more than the recipe recommended. I don't know. But um, we're just going along with what I had for this video. And just to be clear, there are tons of ways to make your own homemade chalk paint. I went with this one because I seen a couple vlogs or websites of people comparing the chalk paints and this was said to be their favorite technique and I liked the way some of the pictures looked when they were showing the final end results. If you guys are interested in seeing me do that on here for you, want me to make chalk, homemade chalk paints and try them all out, let me know in the comments below. Once I was finished applying all the paints to the surfaces, I then have my Google over here for you guys to keep track of the time with me. We're gonna let this sit for two hours and we're five minutes shy of two hours but let's take a look at these results starting with the glass real quick i do want to show you the importance of making sure when you're painting on glass you have glass friendly paint it is something i like to do i love to paint on glass so i have that type of paint i'm taking this Cricut tool and i left the volume on so you can literally hear me scratching it it only has one coat of mod podge on it and it is on there. It is not getting dented up. It is sealed very well. So we are going to be scratching all the surfaces here. You guys didn't think we were going to just look at paint, did you? <laughs> Anyhow, my first glance at this, I love the Waverly and the Rust-Oleum coverage on the glass. I felt like if it was done properly, it could be done in just one coat. However, once it came time for me to start scratching them, the folk art scratched right through. No problem, it just went right through. And the art mines also went right through. Just very, very dominant lines you can see. The Waverly, however, was the only product I did this on that I had to literally make an effort to press very, very hard to get any lines to come through. And that's what I look for when I'm trying to do glass projects with paints is that it does not scratch easily. So if I'm applying a second coat or whatever, I don't have cracking and stuff. The homemade was the worst for me with this one. 
overall the waverly wins for me with this glass surface i feel like it has one coat coverage possibility the scratches barely show and it has a smooth finish let me know in the comments below which one you think wins at first glance on this surface i love the way the waverly art mines in the homemade look once i got up a little bit closer i seen that there was a lot of streaks in the folk art and it was even like raised a little bit like if you rubbed your hand over it you could tell the different variations in the streaks it also scratched up easily along with the art mines i was very shocked about that now the rustoleum scratched but not that bad it was just thin the Waverly held up really well. So for this one, I'm going to have to say that the Waverly wins on this for unfinished wood for me. Let me know in the comments below if you would have chose something different. But I feel like, again, possible one coat coverage. The texture of it is smooth. And I really feel like it's holding up well being scratched. My first impression of the finished surfaces had me sad at the homemade one, but I really appreciated the color in the art mines. I decided to feel all of them because refinish and furniture, texture does play a part to your buyers. The Rust-Oleum is just so soft, but the Waverly came in close behind. And believe it or not, that folk art was pretty rough. Now there was some tannins going on with this rust Stolium, but in the directions it also recommends you put that stain blocker on there and i do since i am refinishing this piece i did not want to dent it any more than it already was so i just put one big scratch in each section the homemade just it made me so sad but the rustoleum barely showed through along with the art mines i was pretty impressed with the art mines for this however the rustoleum wins for me on this finished wood surface it had the smoothest finish by far and the scratching barely showed and should just take two coats with a stain blocker let me know in the comments below if you would choose something different at the end of the day, I think I'm going to stick with Waverly for my crafting projects. And I might look into using Art Minds on one of my furniture flips in the future. Let me know what you guys think of that down below. But for now, rust is going to be what I continue using. Let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about these results. That's it for today's Try It Tuesday, people. I hope you guys got some value, some learning, some entertainment out of it i feel like i learned a couple things for sure next month i have two ideas one is battery brands and the other one is wood filler now battery brands especially if you're a crafter you're constantly buying like little things that light up and stuff like that so it's like what are we going to purchase that will last the longest that is not going to cost ten dollars for four batteries or any ridiculous amount of sum. Anyhow, the other one, I did a flip a couple months ago. I can post that up here. The wood filler I picked still showed through the stain. So I could get different wood fillers, stain different woods, see what does not show through. Let me know in the comments below if either of those spark any of your interest, as well as if you have any ideas, comment down below. I do not have a community page to kind of bounce ideas off of you or polls and things like that. So comment, comment. Anyhow, until next DIY, as always, love you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope to chat with some of y'all in the comments. Bye.